So I'm gonna whip up a big old batch of everything cookies. They start with three sticks of softened butter. I'm making a huge batch because I'm gonna send half of it with the boys to the football game, and I'm gonna take the other half with the girls and me. They both have soccer games tomorrow, so it's a total sports weekend for us. Okay, now to the butter, I'll add a cup and a half of white sugar, and two cups of brown sugar. I usually add more brown sugar than white sugar to cookie recipes because I like the flavor and color a little more. And then I'm just gonna mix this up and cream the butter and sugars together. So I'll just crack in four eggs. This is an enormous cookie recipe. It fills up this bowl and it makes a ton. Two teaspoons of vanilla. And now I'll mix this together. Now that's the wet ingredients. So I'll move on to the dry ingredients. And that starts with four cups of all-purpose flour. Now I'll add four teaspoons of baking soda. And then I'll add a teaspoon of salt. Now I'll just use the mixer again, on low, of course, and just mix this together. And now I'll add the fun stuff. And that starts with a heaping cup of oats. And I'll add three cups of granola. This adds the most wonderful texture and crunch to the cookies. I just love it. I've got some dried cherries, and I'll add a cup of those. And then I'll add about a half a cup of golden raisins. And then I've also got some dried apricots, which happens to be my favorite dried fruit. I'm gonna get about a cup and a half, and then just give them a rough chop so they won't be in such big pieces. All right, those are nice and chopped up, so I'll throw those into the mix. And then the final ingredient, a cup of pecans. And now I have to mix this stuff together. I'll see if my hand mixer can handle it. Wish me luck, I'm going in. The only thing left to do is just get them on the trays. These just need to bake at 375 for about 12 to 14 minutes, and they are gonna be perfect. The cookies are all cooled and they look scrumptious. I'm just packing them so we can take them to our respective sporting events tomorrow. Until then, I'm gonna find a hiding place for these, because if my family finds out about them, they won't last through the night. I'm just making the dough for the cookies. It's two and a half sticks of softened butter and two cups of sugar. Totally easy. Now let that start to cream together, and I'll get the dry ingredients ready. It's two and a fourth cups of flour. This two cup measure is such a lifesaver. Saves me millions of scoops a year, I estimate. <laughs> and then three quarters of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. These are very chocolatey cookies, hence the name. That's all I'm gonna say about that. A teaspoon and a half of baking soda, and then a teaspoon of salt. And then I'll sift these together so it's all one mixture. The butter and sugar are creamed and I'm adding two eggs. I'll let the first one mix in just a little bit before I add the second one. And then a little bit of vanilla. That looks great. Now I'm gonna turn the mixer off before I add the first addition of the dry ingredients. This is a rich, chocolatey, marvelous cookie. I love it and it has so many good things in it. Now I'll keep the mixer on low and I'll gradually add the rest of the dry ingredients. Now I'll crank it up just a bit to give the mixer a chance to get it all combined. So rich and fudgy. Want to get the spatula down in there, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, now I've got some fun things to add. Chocolate chips. These are semi-sweet, but you can go really dark with bittersweet, that would be delicious. Some dried cranberries, or you can use cherries. 
and I'll start to give those a stir. I like to mix these in by hand. I always kind of regret it halfway through though. <laughs> I need to work out a little bit more. Okay, last thing to add, caramelized nuts. So flavorful, they make the cookies wonderful. Once you try these, you'll never go back. I melted two tablespoons of butter in a skillet, added fourth a cup of brown sugar, and cooked it for three minutes until it was caramelized. Then I added half a cup of roasted peanuts and half a cup of slivered almonds. I stirred them into the caramel, then added a teaspoon of cinnamon, some salt, stir it again, and tipped them out to cool onto a wax paper lined sheet pan in an even layer. I'm gonna use my scoop to get these onto the trays. Okay, these are ready for the oven. I'm gonna bake the cookies at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes until they're set in the middle. Now these are pretty tender when they first come out of the oven. So I'm gonna let them sit, and then after about 10 minutes, I'll transfer them to a cooling rack. I'm gonna move on with a batch of sprinkle cookies. They are so cute, so happy, very, very delicious, and they're pretty easy to throw together. I just zested half an orange. I'll need that later. For now, I'm gonna move on with the dough. It starts with six tablespoons of softened butter, and three quarters of a cup of sugar. Okay, I'll turn the mixer on and let that start to beat together. And while it does, I'll throw together the dry ingredients. It's just two cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of salt, and I'll whisk this together. Okay, that's the dry ingredients. So I'll turn the mixer down just a little bit and I'll add a couple of eggs, one at a time. Okay, I'm gonna add the orange zest. This is probably a tablespoon of zest. Now I'll just use the scoop to add the dry ingredients a little bit at a time. Turn off the mixer, get all this luscious dough off the beater. And then I'll just grab a little pinch of dough. These start as cute little balls, and they bake into the most adorable cookies. All right, now I'm gonna roll the rest of the dough, and then I'll get them into the fridge to chill. The cookie dough has been chilling. And that means the cookies won't spread too much when they're in the oven. It's a nice little trick whenever you don't want cookies to change in shape while they bake. They're gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna make the glaze for the cookies. I'm starting with some sifted powdered sugar. I just sift it to make sure there aren't any lumps in that glaze. All right, that's it for the powdered sugar. I'm gonna zest some lemon into the powdered sugar, about two teaspoons. And for the liquid, I just have some milk. I'm gonna start with about three tablespoons and I'll whisk as I go. I always like to add just a little under what I need because if you go too far, then you're gonna have to sift in more powdered sugar and that could go on forever. <laughs> I think that is just the right amount. So here's how you turn these little cookies into sprinkle cookies. I'm gonna grab one and just dip the underside, let the excess drip off. Now I have these cute little rainbow sprinkles and I wanna get as many on top as I can just so they're really colorful and sweet and cute and adorable <laughs> and all those adjectives. Now I'm gonna dip and sprinkle the rest. Aren't they great? I just love them. Now I made 40 of these. Surely no one's gonna notice if one is missing. I put one and a half sticks of salted butter in a small skillet, melted it, and just swirled it around until it was deep golden. So after that, it was time to make cookies. 
I just added half a stick of butter, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, and half a cup of regular sugar in the mixer. I'm letting that start to mix. And I'm gonna slowly drizzle in the brown butter. This stuff is absolutely magic. You can actually substitute brown butter for some of the butter in any cookie recipe you're used to making. I guarantee you it'll make the cookies even more delicious. Okay, the butters and the sugars are mixed together. So I'm gonna add two eggs, one at a time, and a splash of vanilla. That looks great. So I'm gonna mix together the dry ingredients. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, and about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna add about half of the dry mixture to the bowl, and I'll let the mixer start mixing it together. And then I'll just add this gradually until it's all mixed in. That's all mixed together. Now for the nuts, I've got one and a quarter cups of macadamia nuts. They're just roughly chopped and then two cups of white chocolate chunks. Now I'm gonna scoop these onto pans and top them with a little more chocolate and nuts. I'm gonna bake the cookies at 325 degrees for about 14 minutes until the edges are nice and golden. I took the cookies out of the oven Sprinkled the tops with a little sea salt, which makes it taste amazing with the chocolate and nuts, and packed them up for the trip to town. Saucepan chocolate cookies. I am melting the butter in a saucepan. Just one stick, and I'm using salted butter. And just like that, this stick of butter is not only melted, it's starting to sizzle. So as you can imagine, saucepan cookies are made in the saucepan. So I'm gonna add two kinds of sugar to the melted butter, brown sugar and powdered sugar. And this is great because you can mix everything in stages, just keep dumping things in. And then just the act of whisking the sugar and butter together cools it enough that you can drop in one egg, but you wanna keep kind of whisking the whole time just so the egg never has a chance to sit in those warm ingredients for too long. So once you've gotten the egg totally incorporated, it's time to add the first stage of chocolate. Now I've got dark chocolate chips and I'm gonna sprinkle them in to this mixture. And the whole point of this stage of chocolate is to melt it into these warm ingredients and it's happening very, very fast. So I'm also gonna add some vanilla. The cool thing is it's all the same ingredients that you use to make cookies the regular way. It's just the method is the only thing that's different. So now it is time for the dry ingredients. All-purpose flour and baking soda. I've also got some sea salt. Now at this stage, I think I'm gonna switch to the rubber spatula. It's just easier to fold the flour into the mixture. Okay, this is about as smooth and wonderful as it can be. Now I'm gonna scoop the dough onto two cookie sheets and then I'll dot the tops with more chocolate chips. I'm gonna bake these beautifully chocolate cookies at 350 degrees for 12 minutes. Then I'll take them out and let them cool. All right, here they are, chocolate saucepan cookies, an absolute revelation of a cookie method. S'mores cookies are first on the list. So I've just been mixing the wet ingredients together. Melted butter, beaten egg, sugar, and honey. And then I'm gonna drizzle in a little bit of vanilla. This basically is the s'mores version of a cookie. Everything that's great about s'mores all wrapped up in cookie form. That sounds incredible to me. So that's the wet ingredients. For the dry ingredients, it starts with flour, of course. And I love this ingredient, ground graham cracker crumbs. Can't have s'mores without graham crackers. And then baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Whoop! 
I'm making a mess, but that's okay because I'm leaving soon, as soon as the treats are done. <laughs> Maybe the house will magically clean itself. Okay, so I got the dry ingredients mixed together and I'm gonna add them to the wet ingredients and start stirring those together just to incorporate them. So I have a couple more things to add before I scoop them onto the cookie sheet. Beautiful chocolate chips and mini marshmallows because these are s'mores cookies. I suspect these aren't gonna last that long in Betsy's house. All right, to scoop the cookies, and by the way, these are big cookies. I'm gonna scoop a good amount of dough onto a parchment lined sheet pan. And then more chocolate, of course. Got some chunks of chocolate, squares of chocolate bars, and I'll just press it right on top. All right, so that's one cookie scooped. Now I've got 11 more to do. And that's 12 s'mores cookies ready for the next two steps. Put them in the fridge for 30 minutes. Then the second, no surprise, is to bake them. So I'll put them in a 350 degree oven for six minutes. Then rotate the pans so the cookies bake evenly. And then I'll give them another six minutes. You are not gonna believe these cookies. Check it out. Oh my. Gosh, those big chunks of chocolate on top are out of this world. So the cookies actually look amazing just as they are now, and you could consider them done, but I like to do one little final step. I have big marshmallows, and I cut them in half, and I'm putting them cut side down right on top of the cookies, because of course, s'mores have toasted marshmallows, in the middle, so we have to have some toasted marshmallow action in here somewhere. Most of the marshmallows in the cookies are just really soft and gooey inside, but this step really drives that s'mores point home. All right, so back to the oven. I'm gonna turn the broiler on, and then I'm gonna broil these one pan at a time until the marshmallows are toasted. I am not leaving my post because they can get too brown really quickly. It's just gonna take about a minute per pan. The second pan is ready to come out from under the broiler. And when I say these brown quickly, I mean it. That was less than a minute because of the amount of honey in the dough. They can get really brown really quickly, but oh, they're so toasty. Brownie cookies are every bit as delicious as they sound. They're a killer combination of brownies and cookies. And as much as Alex loves chocolate, she is gonna go crazy for these. Now I'll start by making the cookie dough. I've got two sticks of softened butter. They go right into the mixer. And the second stick goes right in. And then two cups of sugar. This is such an easy recipe and it has all the good things of life. Now I'll just turn the mixer on and let it work for a minute and cream these together. You know, when you make brownies, you have to let them cool, cut them into squares. But with the cookies, you just bake them up, pull them right off the cookie sheet and eat them. They're just an easy way to get brownies in your mouth. The butter and sugar are all creamed together. So I'll turn the mixer to the lowest setting and I'll drizzle in the chocolate. This is what makes the brownie cookies brownie cookies. Now, I use bittersweet chocolate and I just melted it in the microwave and it's really, really important to let it cool completely. If you don't, once it hits that butter, it'll start to melt it. It'll just ruin everything. <laughs> now, this is looking great. I'm just gonna bump up the speed just a bit. Okay, that's all mixed together. So I'll go back down to low and I'll drop in three eggs, just one at a time. I already cracked them in the pitcher just to make it easier to add. And the third one. Now I'll also splash in a little bit of vanilla to give it delicious flavor. And that's it for the wet ingredients. Now I'll move forward with the dry. Starts with two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour. I love these two cup measures, they are so handy fourth a cup. And then to really drive home the chocolate part of these brownies, 
a fourth a cup of cocoa powder. And if that wasn't quite enough, <laughs> I'll add another tablespoon. These are unmistakably chocolatey. A teaspoon of baking powder and just half a teaspoon of salt. And that's it for the dry ingredients. I'll turn the mixer on low and I just need to add the dry ingredients. I don't want to add too much at once or I'll have a big poof of cocoa flour. Rest of the dry ingredients go in. All right, that's the last of it. Now I just have to give it a couple seconds to mix all in. It looks delicious, which is exactly what you want at this stage. <laughs> Now I've just got to get the dough scooped out and onto the cookie sheets. I should get about 36 cookies out of this. I got the cookies scooped out, all 36 of them. They look delicious already. They just need to bake in a 350 degree oven for about 11 to 12 minutes. When the time was up and the cookies were all poofed and set, I took them out of the oven, let them cool for a couple of minutes on the pan, and then I transferred them to wire racks and let them cool completely. After that, I sprinkled them generously with powdered sugar, and I packed them in a tin, all ready for Alex's care package. I think those are gonna be the perfect thing to satisfy Alex's sweet tooth. Chocolate overload cookies. So I'm gonna cream together butter and sugars. I've got three sticks of salted butter, a cup of regular sugar, and a cup and a half. Uh-oh. <laughs> there we go. Of <laughs> brown sugar. And I'm gonna go ahead and let the mixer start creaming these together. Cream. And while those cream together, I'm gonna mix up the dry ingredients. So now I'm gonna drop in three eggs, one at a time, boop, and let each one mix in just a little bit before you move on. Ah. Nine times out of 10 when I do this, three or four go in at once. So this is a lucky day, it didn't happen, but it's the first time it didn't happen. Tablespoon of vanilla. Okay, I'm gonna turn the mixer to low, and then I'm gonna use a measuring cup to slowly add the dry ingredients. This is gonna be a chocolate explosion. Okay. I'm gonna turn up the mixer, and just let it really get that stuff mixed together. Ooh, yeah, bye bye. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna just make sure all of this is mixed, and now I'm gonna fold in all of the rest of the chocolate. So I've got dark chocolate chips. You don't wanna to add too many dark chocolate chips because they are really strong, but just a little bit. And then regular semi-sweet chocolate chunks. A bunch of candy coated chocolate pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm folding them in because if I added all of this while it was mixing, all the candy coated chocolate pieces would break up into a million pieces. <laughs> So folding them is always better. So Alex, look at this batter, or this dough. I mean. Oh, boy, boy. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. <laughs> ah, okay. Now I'm gonna form the dough into balls. So I've got a sheet pan with parchment. I'm gonna get rid of this so you can see what I'm doing. And then, Ah, I've got my trusty scoop. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get a big, generous scoop of dough <laughs> and then roll it into a ball, sort of a ball, and put it on the parchment and then mini candy-coated chocolate pieces. Candy-coated chocolate pieces, candy-coated chocolate pieces. And I'm gonna press them all over the surface. And that'll ensure that when the cookies bake, you'll still see those beautiful candies all over the top. Ooh, I could just eat that dough right now. But I can't, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the rest of the dough. Okay, now I just need to chill the dough. So come with me, Alex. Yes, ma'am. I don't want you to miss a single second of this. 
I just need to chill the dough for 30 minutes before the cookies bake. All right, I actually left a few balls of dough in the fridge and we can bake those off later as we need them. I just transferred 12 to baking sheets and let's go put these in the oven. These are so much fun. Wait till you see them after they bake. So I'm gonna put them in a 350 degree oven and they're gonna bake for just about 18 minutes. You are going to be so excited. Okay, these beautiful cookies are out of the oven. They've been cooling. Look at these. Are they gorgeous or what? They are beautiful. gorgeous. And I know this is a cake stand, but I'm gonna call it a cookie stand for today. Just because I can. All right. This is what you call chocolate overload cookies, and there's a good reason for that. Come on in here. Ready? Mm. I mean, <laughs> that is like chocolate heaven. Big chocolate chip cookie. I've got two sticks of butter in the mixer with two thirds a cup of sugar and two thirds a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna turn on the mixer and let it start to do the hard part. Okay, I'm gonna let that cream together for a couple minutes. And while it does, I'm gonna get started on chopping up some chocolate. Instead of using chocolate chips, I'm using big bars of baking chocolate. I've got eight ounces of semi-sweet and four ounces of dark. So it's a really chocolatey cookie. I like to cut it into chunks. I just think chopped chocolate works so much better in chocolate chip cookies than pre-made chocolate chips do. They just melt so smooth and creamy. Okay, I've got most of that chopped up. There's a mix of big chunks and little bits. Okay, the butter and sugars are creamed together. So I'm gonna add two eggs, one at a time. This is a pretty basic chocolate chip cookie recipe. The more simple the recipe stays, the better. Okay, now to the egg and sugar mixture, I'm gonna add some vanilla. That looks good. So now it's time for the dry ingredients. Very, very simple. Two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour. That's a two cup measure. And then to the flour, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm gonna sprinkle the tops of the cookies with sea salt, which makes them so delicious. So I don't wanna oversalt the dough. Okay, I'll just mix in the dry ingredients real quick. That looks great. Now I can add the chocolate. Trust me, you wanna get all of this in there. The big chunks are wonderful, but look at these little powdery bits that are left after chopping. I want all of that going in. It just kind of becomes part of the dough. And speaking of the dough, the dough itself is so good. <laughs> Don't even start tasting it because you won't be able to stop. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on a little bit higher speed. <laughs> I'm tired, I don't feel like mixing in this chocolate by hand. Done. Now I'm gonna scoop all the dough onto baking sheets. Okay, I got them all scooped up. Now before I bake them, I always like to sprinkle a little sea salt on the top. Now I'm gonna chill these for 20 minutes before I bake them. Okay, the dough's all chilled. Now it's time to bake the cookies. These next steps are simple. I'll put them in a 350 degree oven, bake them for 18 minutes, then take them out to cool. Oatmeal cookies are always a favorite among kids, so I knew I wanted to make a batch of my brown sugar oatmeal cookies for the kids at the parade. These are so delicious. They're everything that's wonderful about regular oatmeal cookies, but with a whole bunch of brown sugar, they bake up really chewy and wonderful. Now I've got two sticks of softened butter in the mixer and I'm adding two packed cups of brown sugar. And I'll just turn on the mixer and let it start to mix together. Now I'll whip up the dry ingredients. And that just starts with a cup and a half of flour. Just even it off with my finger. This is a really easy recipe. All right, a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then I'll just stir this together so it'll be all ready. 
All right, that's all mixed together. It'll be ready when I need it. So now I'll crack in a couple of eggs. The sugar and butter are all mixed together. I use dark brown sugar for these cookies. You can also use light brown. Either one is delicious, but I love that dark color of dark brown sugar. And then two teaspoons of vanilla. One, two. And now with the mixer going, I'll just add the dry ingredients in a couple of batches. Let it mix really gradually. How did anybody make cookies before mixers? It makes it so easy. You just turn it on, add the stuff, and you don't have to expend any energy at all. <laughs> I love recipes like that. Okay, and now for the oats. Three cups of just regular old-fashioned oats. Just sprinkle them in. I love these unusual measuring cup sizes. This is a cup and a half. It makes it so handy. I used a two cup measure for the brown sugar. Okay, this goes right in. Now, a lot of oatmeal cookie recipes have nuts in them, but because I'm unsure about allergies with the kids, it's safer to leave them out. A little bit more. All right, now I'll just grab my scoop and get the dough onto the baking sheets. All right, I got 24 good-sized cookies out of this dough. Now I'm gonna put the cookies into a 350-degree oven. They're gonna bake for about 12 minutes or so until they're nice and dark and chewy. When the cookies were all done, I just took them out of the oven, let them cool on the baking sheets, then I packed them into a container so they'd be all ready for the picnic.